Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. Recently on this channel we have been making our way through looking at the Capcom vs series in a great amount of depth. This week, in order to prevent burnout, we are going to take a break from looking into the history of that series and instead look into another fighting game released around the same period. If you can think back to the year of 1996, stylistically the favourable graphical style of the era was 3D polygon based gaming. We were in a time period where every franchise under the sun was trying to make a successful transition towards this art direction. Sometimes this worked out great, and in other cases, uh, not so great. So with this in mind, today we are going to look at Street Fighter EX, the first ever Street Fighter game to feature polygon graphics. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the history of Street Fighter EX, and why no one plays this game. Yeah! As we all know, 1996 and the rest of the latter part of the 90s was an interesting time for gaming, which would see a number of big names rise and fall due to the paradigm shift to 3D. Through this time frame, fighting games such as Tekken and Soul Blade would rise up and wow consumers with their advanced looking graphics. For some, flat 2D gaming was quickly becoming a relic of the past, and instead blocky polygons had become the flavour of the day. So in many ways, the writing was on the wall with regards to the consumer shift towards this graphical style. Nevertheless, Capcom chose to push through with their development of Street Fighter 3 regardless, a game with some of the best 2D sprite animations the world had ever seen. Despite this though, many issues arose with this game at the time. Apart from people just generally not being that excited about 2D sprite based games, a further issue arose in the fact that the sprites in the game simply had too many animation frames for any existing console to be able to handle at the time of its arcade release. For this reason, it would take the release of a Dreamcast before anyone had the opportunity to take this game home, and that would be a few years later. In regards to the decision to make the game 2D, general producer Noritaka Fanamizu explained, we feel that 3D is not really suitable for the head-to-head -head fighting and, to be frank, Capcom doesn't really have the techniques to display high quality graphics in 3D, which certainly seems to be the case when it came to their arcade hardware at the time, as all of their CP system arcade board games only featured 2D sprites. In contrary to this though, a polygon based Street Fighter game known as Street Fighter EX would see a release regardless, which was made possible due to Capcom working in partnership with a company known as Arika. Arika was founded in 1995 by a gentleman known as Akira Nishitani, the same man who had previously played a big role in the development of Street Fighter 2, even designing many of the characters. The company's first ever game would be Street Fighter EX, a game that was first released as an arcade game for the Sony ZN arcade hardware. As mentioned earlier, Street Fighter 3 was programmed to use a lot of 2D sprite animation frames, which was perfect for the Capcom System 3 board, but no use for home consoles of the time, particularly the most popular system of the period, the PlayStation, that struggled with 2D gaming. This is evidenced by how poorly the Versus series ports run on the system, which we have already covered on here recently. Whilst the Capcom boards were not a suitable home for a polygon game, the Sony ZN hardware was pretty perfect due to the fact that it was based off of Sony PlayStation architecture, meaning that it would be the perfect arcade home for a game which was made with the intention of being ported well to the most popular system on the planet. So now we have discussed how a 3D Street Fighter game was possible despite Capcom stating otherwise, let us finally begin discussing the game itself. Like most games that carry the name Street Fighter, the game is obviously a head-to-head -head fighter. The game was the original title in the series to feature 3D polygon graphics, predating Street Fighter 4 by a number of years. In this game, polygon based fights would still take place on a 2D plane similar to that of Tekken and other games of the same ilk. With regards to this game, Arika set out with the attention for this game's mechanics to be similar to Street Fighter 2 and the Alpha series, with the only major change being the actual polygon visuals. 
The thinking behind this was to release a game that looked visually impressive whilst maintaining the same gameplay long-term fans loved and adored. Outside of the cliché mechanics, there were still small tweaks in the gameplay that were implemented in an attempt to further make this game stand out. Changes included the character roster itself, which would mix familiar faces from Street Fighter 2 with completely new characters who were original designs. Interestingly, the player select screen itself is in 2D and drawn in an anime art style, which is an odd departure stylistically from the game's actual gameplay. Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, Guile and Zangief make a return, who are all great iconic choices to include in a Street Fighter game in my opinion. Out of the new cast members, we have Crackerjack, a former bouncer from Vegas who wields a baseball bat, Doctrine Dark, an American German mercenary who is seeking revenge against Guile, Pull and Perma, the daughter of an Arab billionaire, Skullamania, a third rate businessman from Tokyo who works to support his wife and children, who also chooses to fight behind a mask to conceal his identity, and Hokuto, who simply trains in her family style of martial arts. To bolster this roster, there are also a further few secret characters and a final boss battle with Bison, all in all giving the title an eclectic little roster. This game lets all combatants fight it out on a 2D plane, however at times, such as when performing certain moves, the camera will change perspective, showing off a 3D arena. Special moves and super combos both make a return, along with a super meter. However, this game differs in the fact that the gauge is split into three sections rather than just levels, which is unique to the EX series. There is also a function in this game known as the guard break, which is a type of move that makes your opponent dizzy if you use this style of attack against one of your opponent's blocks. This varies from guard breaking in alpha, as it allows you to stun your adversary. In regards to the critical reception of this game, I can only find one source with regards to the original arcade game, and that's a review from Next Generation. The publication as a whole looked at this game as somewhat of a failed attempt to bring the Street Fighter franchise into a 3D environment. They stated that, while the characters are evenly balanced and have a handful of innovative moves, the game plays more like a distant cousin to the Street Fighter series, and is simply not as fun. Further from this, Next Generation also criticised the game's animation and backgrounds, stating they were not up to the franchise's usual standards. After the release of this game, in 1996, in typical Street Fighter fashion, an arcade upgrade version of this game would see a release the following year. This title, released on March 3rd 1997, allowed you to play as all the hidden characters from the previous game instantly, and would add a further four hidden characters. The new lineup would even include Evil Ryu from Street Fighter Alpha 2. As expected with this game, it would only be a matter of time until a Sony PlayStation version would be published, which is exactly what you would expect really, considering the game was programmed to run on Sony ZN hardware, an arcade ball based on the PlayStation. This version of the game, titled Street Fighter EX Alpha, would arrive on the system on July 17, 1997 in Japan. This game would build on the roster count even further, introducing both Daosim and Sakura to this spin-off of the franchise. Bonus stages, including barrel smashing, were also added to the title, all in all making this the most complete rendition in the series yet. Now, with regard to this game, it certainly does not seem to be remembered by the masses to the same degree as Tekken, Soul Blade, or even the Virtual Fighter series. So, what was it about this game that prevented it from becoming the stuff of legends? Let us delve into some of the journalists' response to this game of the time of release. GameSpot would state that this PlayStation game was a 3D Street Fighter game worthy of its heritage, but by the same token, it's perhaps too closely tied to its heritage. They felt that whilst the game had strong points, it was perhaps a stepping stone to a more impressive Street Fighter game yet to come. They gave the game some criticisms, such as claiming the game doesn't attempt to be anything more than a juggling and combo filled game like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, but with the play, speed and graphic style of Namco's first Tekken game. What I guess they also meant by this was that the game was pretty dated in comparison to its 3D contemporaries, considering Tekken 3 was already out by this point. They would also complain about the game's lack of an attempt made to give the characters any true 3D movement. GameSpot were also uninspired by the game's characters, complaining that many of the new characters just mimicked old characters in some ways. 
In terms of the game's fighting mechanics, they would heavily talk about the game's heavy emphasis on offensive attacking as opposed to the more defensive functions found in previous iterations from the franchise. They would state, Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha is not a game for turtlers and not necessarily even a game for street purists. This is now less of a game of strategy than it is a game of action, without a doubt. To keep the game flowing, Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha has reasonably forgiving controls that ease the chaining together of combos and execution of special attacks. The game's visuals and audio would both be praised with of course the exception of many of the game's new character designs. They would close by summarising, Taken as a whole, Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha is a fun game with great gameplay, better than average aesthetics and a large number of characters. As we've seen many, perhaps too many times before, Capcom has a tendency to use its good Street Fighter games as a foundation to build truly great ones. How long will Street Fighter X Plus Alpha be worth playing? Your answer will depend upon how tired you are of traditional Street Fighter gameplay. As you can see, although sounding flawed in places, the opinion of this game given by GameSpot was all around pretty positive. But some of the best reception for the title was still to come. The UK PlayStation magazine stated the gameplay is as recognisable as the Taj Mahal and that it was the most fun we've ever had with street fighting since Turbo, giving the game a remarkable 10 out of 10. They concluded, this is like a second honeymoon, the true master of martial arts games remains unrivalled. IGN would build on this praise, stating, This is one of the best Street Fighters, and I think it's a good switch. It's still a 2D fighter, but it looks a whole lot better. The home version of this game sold over 400,000 copies, which is nothing in comparison to the over 20 million copies Street Fighter 2 sold, but over five times that of the 80,000 copies Street Fighter 3 in its iterations would later sell on the Dreamcast, all in all making the game moderately successful sales-wise. So, from all of this, we can see that upon release, Street Fighter EX Alpha Plus received all round very favourable reviews. So with all of this in mind, it does not really clear up as to why the game has faded almost into the realms of being forgotten, when compared to the rest of the series. Which can look surprising, considering that this game was the first in the series to enter the world of polygons. I rarely hear of anyone talking about this game, or going back to play this today. So from here, I have decided, in order to look into this game's fate, to ask the glorious people of Twitter what their theories were with regards to the game being so overlooked. So, we shall discuss some of these opinions now. Meme Machine Dean tweeted out, I'd say it was a change of pace and mechanics, something which was quite different to what had been previous. The Street Fighter community are not big on change from my own experiences. I can only assume with games such as Tekken walking on their turf, they felt the need to make a 3D fighter. Dean brings up a very good point with regards to the franchise's biggest hits. Many of the games from the Street Fighter series that are celebrated today have a timeless look and appeal, mainly due to the timeless 2D sprite animations many of the games include. Street Fighter 2, 3, the Alpha and Versus series all include a range of games that have this ageless look to them. EX, on the other hand, is ugly and blocky in comparison and has aged terribly in the looks department. So I guess if you're looking to play the game in polygon form, you have Street Fighter 4 and 5 to play instead. Fred Nort Sales onwards reinforces this opinion by stating the game is often forgotten now, probably because it didn't feel like a proper Street Fighter game, and even by PS1 era standards, is pretty ugly. Metal Bayako criticises the game itself, stating that it felt stiff, clunky, and a bit slow. The projectiles seemed to fly in slow motion. Which, to be fair, is certainly true for EX, and as stated earlier in the video, is not as playable as the likes of Tekken 3 which is a game made in the same style that seems a lot more finely tuned. I guess a big factor as to why this game is less remembered is simply because there are far better polygon fighters to go back and play from the era. The video game newsroom echoes these sentiments by stating it's forgotten because it excelled at nothing, it was neither as fast or fluid as Soul Edge and it lacked the innovative controls of Tekken and it wasn't as deep as Virtual Fighter. His only saving grace was the Street Fighter license. Street Fighter wouldn't find its 3D feet until Street Fighter 4. 
Anarchy Software 2 adds to these sentiments by stating, I thought it was kind of lame. In a world of Soul Edge and Tekken, it just didn't hold up. The next year Bushido Blade and Mortal Kombat 4 came out, and I can honestly understand why no one remembers this one. Half Forward Circles agreed with this by tweeting, Exactly this, bad timing in Capcom's part. If this had have hit before Tekken or Soul Calibur, people would have been lapping it up. Paired with the fact that they had pretty much hit the pinnacle of 2D with the Alpha series around the same time. It just got overlooked by most. Jordan Wells adds to the conversation with the game by tweeting the game has bad controls and is just weird. Nearly turned the Alpha series. Street Fighter is good in 2D only, in my opinion. George Quell brought the game's modern legacy and visibility into question by stating, doesn't help that its new characters have that weird, made by a different developer thing, so don't turn up in the comics, card games, etc. as often either. What he speaks of overall weakens the game's presence today. IDFKA also stated, it wasn't nearly as influential as the 2D counterparts and was basically just Capcom jumping on the 3D bandwagon. I'm not saying it wasn't good, but it didn't take the series to a new level. Plus for new players, it became a bit confusing where to start with which Street Fighter game. Raffle Zeus 2 also raises a good point, which also feeds into what I said about Street Fighter 3 in a previous video I made, when he simply tweeted one word, saturation. Basically, there being too many Street Fighter games being released at this point, and an overabundance of fighters out there anyway. Other Twitter users, such as Growl here for example, admit that they played the game a lot in previous years, but have since ditched the game permanently. He tweeted, I played it loads when it released, not touched it in years. I guess that would make it a game of its time. 3D was very flavour of the month, whereas it's pretty standard these days, and EX doesn't really do anything jaw-dropping. So, to conclude today's video, although popular with journalists on release, the game goes largely forgotten and is fairly overlooked today. From my research and interactions, I can summarise that this took place due to the following reasons. The game has not aged as well against the sprite-based games from the series. It was inferior in gameplay to its Polygon contemporaries. Capcom oversaturated the Street Fighter brand by releasing too many games at once. And the fact that it was developed by Eureka rather than Capcom which has led it to get less callbacks. Whilst being overlooked today, the 400,000 copies EX Alpha sold on the PlayStation, paired with the positive critical response at the time from gaming publications, would mean that the game would be deemed popular enough to receive sequels, which we may look at in depth in the future on here. Further from this, whilst the new characters established in the EX series would not appear in Street Fighter games outside of this sub-series, they would still go on to appear in a game known as Fighting Layer, a collaborative effort from Namco and Eureka from 1998. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of Street Fighter EX, Street Fighter's first polygon based game that people do not really play today. Let me know in the comment section why you think this game is overlooked and sometimes forgotten. If you enjoyed this content then please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to ensure you get multiple in-depth videos on retro gaming from my channel every week. Finally, to conclude this video, my channel Top Hat Gaming Man is funded by the fantastic support I receive from my amazing Patreon benefactors who really do relieve an element of stress from my life and help encourage me to get videos out to all of you every week. So a huge thank you and a massive shout out to Carl Johnson, J.D. Robbins, Sebastian Great, Sid Spaces, Andrew Bozanski, Ed O'Reilly, Quang DX, Spons B, Michael Baker, Computer Man, Antonio Rodriguez and all of my other patrons. Thank you all so much.